Hello everyone, this is topic 3.8, Representations of Solutions. This is taken from AP Chemistry College Board. By now, we already know the meaning of solution and in this video, we will see that what kind of interactions are present in a solution with the help of some models. So let's start. Let's first of all start from the ionic compounds. So here I've taken the example of NaCl. We already know that how NaCl is formed. The sodium atom gives one electron and changes into any positive ion and that electron is gained by the chlorine atom and it becomes chloride ion. The interaction between the sodium ion and the chloride ion is called the ionic bonding. In the crystal structure of NaCl, there is an alternate arrangement of the ions. This kind of arrangement basically decreases the repulsion between the ions and it makes the compound stable. And we also know how does a water molecule look like. Water molecule has one oxygen atom which is covalently bonded to two hydrogen atoms. As oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, that is why the oxygen gets a partial negative charge and the, both the hydrogens have a partial positive charge. Now when the NaCl is dissolved in water, the NaCl dissociates into sodium ion and the chloride ion. Because of the attraction between the sodium positive ion and the partial negative charge of the oxygen of water molecule, the particulate model of NaCl solution looks like this, where the sodium ion is surrounded by the oxygen atoms of the water molecule and the chloride ion is surrounded by the hydrogen atoms of the water molecule. So the interactions between the sodium ion and the chloride ion is solute-solute interactions and the interaction between the water molecule and the ions is the solute-solvent interactions. So this is how the model looks like. This was about the ionic compounds. Now let's see about the covalent compounds which do not dissociate in water. So I have taken the example of sugar molecule. Sugar molecule has uh, is a covalent molecule which has carbon, oxygen and hydrogen atoms. Here also the oxygen atom is present which is more electronegative than carbon as well as hydrogen. That is why the oxygens get a partial negative charge and the hydrogens get a partial positive charge in the sugar molecule. Due to this again there is an interaction between the partial positive charge of sugar molecule and the partial negative charge of the water molecule. There is also an interaction between the partial negative charge of sugar molecule and partial positive charge of the water molecule. So this kind of interaction can be represented by this model. Now let's see some questions and try to understand this thing more. The question is, a student was asked to draw a diagram showing the interactions of the different particles present in KBR aqueous. Their work is shown below. The question is, what two errors are present in the student's diagram? The water molecule is shown like this, where the bigger circle is the oxygen and these two circles are hydrogens. So here we can see that the potassium ion is surrounded by the oxygens of the water molecule and both of these bromide ions are surrounded by the hydrogens of the water molecule. So what is the error here? First thing you need to see that the ratios of potassium and bromide are same or not. Here there is one potassium ion shown and there are two bromide ions shown in the model but in KBR the ratio between the potassium ion and the bromide ion is 1 is to 1. So this is the first error we can say that the ratios between the potassium and the bromide ion is different. The second error you can say is the bromide ion should be bigger than the potassium ion because of the periodic properties. If you want to know more about this you can watch the topic periodic properties. So in this figure the bromide ion is shown smaller than the potassium ion which is again incorrect. So these two errors can be interpreted from this diagram. Now let's see this question. 
The diagram below is a model of two solutions. Each blue ball represents one particle of solute. So here there are two solutions, solution A and solution B and in both of them the solvent volume is 50 ml. The question is which solution has a higher concentration of blue particles. Now we know that what is the meaning of concentration. Concentration is the number of particles of solute or you can say number of moles of solute divided by the volume of solution. Here in the solution A there are 12 particles and in solution B there are 11 particles shown. As the solvent volume in both the cases is same so it means that solution A has a higher concentration because of more number of particles than the solution B. So the answer is solution A. The next question is the diagram below depicts three aqueous solutions of the same solute. Each particle in the diagram represents one mole of solute. Which of the following arranges the solutions in order of increasing concentrations? So we can see three beakers A, B and C. In all of these beakers the particles are shown and here each particle represents one mole. And the volume of these three beakers are also different. So it becomes difficult to compare just by counting the number of particles. Molarity is also a unit of concentration of a solution. So molarity is calculated as number of moles of solute divided by the volume of solution. Here for these three beakers let's calculate the molarity. For beaker A the molarity would be as there are six particles so it means six moles of solute divided by one liter. So this equals 6 molar. In beaker B there are again 6 particles. So there are 6 moles divided by 2 liter. So the answer here is 3 molar. And in beaker C there are 3 particles. So there are 3 moles divided by 1. And so this means that the concentration is 3 molar. So the concentrations of beaker B and beaker C is same and beaker A concentration is more than the both. Here in the options, option A is the correct one. The next question is which of the following diagrams best represents a solution of PBNO3 whole twice in water? The water molecules are not shown for simplicity. So PBNO3 whole twice is an ionic compound so it will dissociate as Pb2 positive ion and NO3 negative ion. In this figures we can see that the lead ion is represented as 2 positive and the NO3 negative ion is represented as a negative ion. In the compound PbNO3 whole twice the ratio between lead and the NO3 negative is 1 is to 2 that is the number of NO3 negative ions is double than the Pb2 positive ions. In the figure A there are 3 NO3 negative ions and there are 6 Pb2 positive ions so this is wrong because the lead ion should be more than the NO3 negative ions. In figure B there are equal number of lead 2 positive ions and NO3 negative ions. So again this is wrong. The C option shows that the compound has not dissociated and the PV ion is bonded to the NO3 negative ions. So this is again a wrong option. In option D there are 3 lead ions and there are 6 NO3 negative ions. So this is the correct option because the number of NO3 negative ions is double than the PB2 positive ion. So option D is correct. The learning objective of the topic was using particulate models for mixtures represent interactions between components represent concentrations of components. So in this video I have talked about the interactions which are present when ionic compound as well as the covalent compounds are dissolved in water and I have also discussed that how the different concentrations of the components are represented with the help of the models. Please like and subscribe to the channel Log Iota and press the bell icon.